Oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> ah, that's it. Lovely. As long as it doesn't go through the concrete, we're right. Righto, success. We got the uh, shaft out of the pedestal base. Uh, went off with a loud bang, as you saw before, when we uh, put it in the hydraulic press. I've got it set up in the lathe now, and I've got the steady holding, supporting one end. The other end uh, firmly secured in the three-door chuck. I'm just going to linish this end very slowly, very carefully. Uh, I believe it's got some, some sort of adhesive. Could be Loctite on it when it was originally, uh, originally built. So off we go, guys. We'll see how it goes. We might speed the lathe up a little bit in a minute. Uh, finished linishing the shaft and giving it a bit of a polish up. Uh, hopefully the um, the better the drill press, press will slide up and down nice and gracefully on that now. All the rust has gone, all the scales off it. You can see I've taken off all the Loctite and all the uh, residual rust that was in there when I actually pressed it out of the housing. Alright, I'll just put this back in the camera holder. just want to point something out to you. Whenever you're linishing on the lathe, guys, never ever wrap the linish tape around your finger or anything like that. If you notice when I was linishing, yes, it is a rather long piece, agreed. However, I held it in my thumb and finger. At any time, if it grabbed, it could be easily pulled out of my thumb and finger and would not pull me into the lathe. I can't stress that enough, guys. I had I've, uh, moved up to my second lathe here in the workshop at school. We've got six of these uh, lathes. I believe they're Taiwanese lathes. But anyway, you can't really buy Australian made anymore. Um, I've got a bit of billet in here. This is just a uh, scrap that I found in a scrap yard and uh, Anyway, I've got to machine it down to an OD size of 90 millimetres. I'm currently about 134 mil. So usually I wouldn't hold... Uh, this, this steel had been laser cut, so it was pretty concentric, really. However, usually you'd never hold, uh, you know, black steel or steel that was a little bit out around in a three-jaw chuck because you risk the, you know, you run the risk of it uh, coming out and killing you. So you'd usually dial that up in a four-jaw chuck. But look, I've held it pretty secure there. It's, pr it's all right. I'll just double-check that tightness of the chuck, make sure the three door chucks tighten up. I always check my three door chuck at the three stages, never just rely on uh, one of them, make sure it's tight, just want to secure enough clamping pressure so it doesn't come off. Now I'm just using some ISCAR tooling here, okay, just give it a bit of a clean so you can see. This is one of the ISCAR 2020 products. Um, it, will, it will also face and do par parallel turning. I can be quite savage with it too and take a big cut. This lathe doesn't have the horsepower really to take a full depth cut that I'd like to take, but anyway, we'll give it a crack. You can have a watch. I'll drop this camera down a little bit. Now I've just got it sitting up here on the lathe bed, so hopefully it doesn't fall off and I'll lose my GoPro or something like that. Alrighty, let's get into it, guys. I'll just drop that. It's in reverse, here we go. Well, I'll keep roughing out here, so I'll fast forward this so you guys don't have to watch. It's pretty boring. Um, anyway.
Right, I've uh, got it down to the diameter that I want. I'm just going to uh, offset the tool post down, just break this sharp edge on the job here. Careful we don't hit the chuck or the chuck jaws, we'll just take off that sharp edge there. I oh know, we're just going to run the center drill through the job now. Got a number, I think it's a number six in there. So the shaft size is 63.5. Righty hey guys, um, I've bought it out, I'm not sure of the size, I'll just uh, check it now. Use a telescopic gauge, I'll move that coolant out of the way. I might just take the, the boring bar off, just so we don't cut, so I don't cut my arm on it. So the shaft size is 63.5, and we're currently at 62 millimetres, I don't know if you can see that there. So we've got, I want an interference fit, so I'll probably give it 0.2, so I'll probably give it, uh, put a machine up another 1.3 mil. Alrighty. Righto, I've uh, finished machining the um, the boss here on the lathe. I got it to roughly interference fit of about 0.2 of a millimetre in here. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is turn the jaws around, spin it around this way, take off the metal here and give it a face and clean it all up. Alright. Righto, I've uh, got the jaws turned around and I'm actually clamping this internally on the ID. You might be able to see that there. And uh, all I've got to do now is face this and clean this up and bring it down here. Been a bit of fun. Here we go.
the chip rate in, that's the main thing. Remember to have your safety glasses on, guys. Just to show you, we're getting a nice chip coming off. You can see it's smouldering in there. So we are removing the, uh, the heat with the chip. I know I need to use a centre punch and I've just pulled it out of the shelf and it's uh, blunt as, so I better sharpen it up. Remember when you're starting a pedestal grinder, always step to one side. You just never know if the stone will explode. Step to one side. Wait for it to get, get up to RPM, then come in. A nice point on that now. Right, oh, I've milled out this little pocket here and I've just used uh, the diagonals here and found the center and I'm just going to center pop that now. As you can see when I tried to center pop it before it was a little bit ugly and it moved on me a little bit so I'll just move it over here. One good hit and there we have it. See our center punch is nice and sharp now. I'm on the drill press now and I'm going to do a pilot hole through here then Drill it at 8.5mm, then uh, tap it with a metric um, rigid tap at about M10 by 1.5mm pitch. Okay guys, I'm in the welding bay now and uh, I'm going to use a heating torch on the oxyacetylene and heat these two pieces up before I weld them. Uh, this is quite thick plate, it's 10mm thick. I actually drew this up in SolidWorks and then uh, sent, sent the DXF file out and had it laser cut. Um, I could have cut it here on my plasma cam but at the time I didn't have my plasma up and going, it wasn't commissioned. Alright, so anyway we'll, uh, I'll show you that. and. Um, I might even just uh, get the DXX file and cut this out in the plasma cam just to simulate it, but I'll use a little bit thinner gauge so I don't waste material, alright? Well there you have it, it's uh, not 10mm thick of course, that's only 1.5mm thick steel but uh, I could have quite easily cut that out with a hypertherm, it's a 65 amp one I could have easily cut 10mm uh, but what a shame I didn't have it ready in, in time when I needed the plate it only just got commissioned last week Ok I've got my acetylene set around about 100 psi with a flow at 100 psi and my oxygen set at 200 Here we go
There we have it guys. Alright guys, I've got a bit of Loctite down here on the actual shaft itself. We'll stand it up here. There's our finished product. And I'll show you where it fits. It goes on this pedestal here, like so. Now I made two of these. Uh, so what I was doing, these, these drills were actually bench drills and I took the base off them to convert them into a pedestal drill. I found these pedestals and uh, here's one I've done earlier in the week. It's been painted, so one of our teachers painted that and uh, cleaned it all up so it looked really good for the, for the workshop. He's got on a pedestal and uh, yeah, gets it off a bench, that sort of thing, and doesn't take up a lot of room. Okay, guys, that concludes this video. I, I hope I taught you something, or I hope you found it interesting. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, feel free to post any comments.